Let's talk to Dr. Daniel Gooding. He is the CEO of New Four Mix. Um, Dr. Daniel, welcome. Thank you. Um, I won't tell anyone you're a Man United fan because that will make you real. Okay, let's um, <laughs> talk about some headlines um, off the website. Um, the, it's a pharmaceutical development company using a co-crystal tech, unlocking the therapeutical potential of approved drugs with lead programs in oncology, supportive care and fibrosis. Wow. I think you just invented a new word, therapeutical. I'm not sure if that is actually in the Oxford, um, but uh, I'll give you it anyway. Thank you very much. What does that mean to a man like me? Yeah, of course. So uh, if you think about what those words mean, pharmaceutical development company. So uh, pharmaceutical would imply that uh, we work exclusively with small molecules, you, you know, things that you might see in your uh, traditional uh, medicine cabinet, paracetamol, aspirin, small molecules, not some of the more complicated uh, biotech type things that people are developing at the moment, you know, proteins, gene therapies, etc. So we're, we're playing with your traditional small molecules. And by development, what we're saying is we're taking these uh, molecules, known molecules, through uh, new uh, development programs. Uh, and that, that implies that our business model is one of out-licensing them. So demonstrating and developing them to a point where we've proved a concept behind that product before out-licensing uh, the rights to that product to a pharmaceutical company that will actually take it to market. So um, it's a common mod model within the pharmaceutical ecosystem at the moment. Small companies developing uh, uh, products to a level of demonstration of concept before they're, they're bought and, and, and put into uh, pharma companies that actually commercialise them. So oh. that's the message we're trying to get out. That's our business model. Okay, so you're established in 2008. To paraphrase, the approach harnesses these advantages. Identify co-crystal tech to protect and enable lower risk, balanced pipeline, early revenues. I love that word, early revenues. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, let, let's get into a bit of that then. So um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the fundamental aspect of what we do is we develop pro new products from known drugs. Okay? Okay. So that's the risk mitigation aspect. It's a risk mitigation for two reasons. One is that we know uh, that these molecules are already safe. Uh, this is a major reason why some uh, typical biotech or pharma place fail for, for safety reasons that couldn't be pre-envisaged. So we already know that that's a risk that we've discharged by working with known molecules. Um, because of the history of their use um, in uh, uh, you know, humans, we can also take a much more informed view about their ability to do something novel uh, in a new use also. Okay, so we're going in uh, having taken away the safety risk but also de-risked uh, our understanding of whether we're going to see a likely tick in our future clinical study. So, um, uh, you know, we are not the first company to, uh, you know, consider uh, what we term, you know, th this whole term of, you know, reusing known drugs is technically called reprofiling, okay? So we're not the first company to invent that. However, we are the first person to bring co-crystal technology to underpin that. And that's what makes, you know, I think Newform is really unique. Typically, when one's thinking about a new thing that you can do with a known drug, uh, particularly if that drug is old, a lot of the patents are already expired, so it's kind of open season, if you like, on that molecule. Anyone could, could potentially do it. Uh, also, as you know, we often know uh, in, in our space, uh, you know, small molecules are, are pretty troublesome things uh, to deliver to humans. So what we can deliver with, with co-crystal technology is these two things. We can get robust new sums of matter patent protection in place, but also we can dramatically improve uh, our ability to use these known drugs in new ways that weren't previously possible. So it's the co-crystal technology that's giving us a platform to go off and conduct reprofiling plays that weren't previously possible. Mm. So coming back to early revenues, we've got two lead programs. Uh, our first lead program is about developing a, a new version of an existing treatment. Okay, uh, and we're able to use uh, our, our co-crystal approach to uh, do that in ways that haven't previously been possible. Um, so because we're developing uh, a, a new version of an existing treatment, we, the, the clinical work that we need to do is, is very minimal. Um, we've also already our licensed marketing rights for China to uh, a development partner that we're already uh, familiar with out in China. Um, uh, and so uh, we have uh, some you know, pretty uh, reasonable revenue coming from that asset when it hits some pretty near-term uh, development milestones also. So that's where the near-term revenue piece comes from. We've already uh, out-licensed Chinese marketing rights. Um, the actual uh, path forward uh, from that point onward for our licensee and for us to get to the market with this first product is pretty short. The second product is a very different beast, though. Um, uh, a lot of the data that we've got demonstrates that uh, 
this product really has the opportunity to uh, prolong life, the potential to prolong life of sufferers of, of various fibrotic diseases. Um, however, you know, to, to be able to say that hand and heart, obviously we need to do the, uh, the clinical work to, to, to do the, the, the patient proof of concept study. Uh, and that's a longer term view. But you know, what I would really encourage uh, your uh, listeners to, to do is you know, to do their own research, you know, look at a couple of things, look at deals that have been done in the fibrosis space, look at the Promedior deal that was done, uh, look at the Pharmaxis deal that was done to get a view of the kinds of transactions that can take place for companies that have done that kind of thing, that proof of concept uh, stage in, in a patient. Look at, look at those deals as, as a barometer. Also to look at other companies that have done deals uh, with uh, known drugs. Look at uh, the background behind Rofade. Look at the back behind, uh, uh, background behind uh, a product called Tecfidera for, uh, for a multiple cirrhosis. Uh, look at the background behind a, 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 a treatment called Serara. These were you know, really interesting products that have got a known molecule background, but companies were able to do some really amazing commercial deals based on a nice IP position that they had around that known drug. So I think those kinds of examples can give uh, your listeners uh, you know, insight into kind of what our aspirations are. Okay, so you had an RNS um, update on July the 2nd, and it talked in codes, NXP001, <laughs> NXP002. That's right. Why, why codes and not names? Well, I think it just gives a reference point, you know, um, uh, what names, it's uh, a way of us communicating what our, our programs are mm. um, uh, without being completely explicit. You know, we're not the only ones to do it. Um, you know, you can go onto uh, uh, many other pharma companies' websites and they'll give you maybe a list of 10 codes in development for different indications, and they'll all actually be the same <laughs> right, molecule. Right, okay, so. okay. So, you know, this is just kind of par for the course, really, in our sector. Um, so uh, we, I just talked about those two uh, codes that you mentioned, actually. NFX1 is the oncology-supported yep. care treatment that we've done a deal on already. NXP2 is our uh, anti-fibrotic uh, uh, program. Yep. So I uh, hope that... Um, well, it clearly, the bulletin boards were very busy after the updates. Is that yeah. a good sign, a bad sign? Do, do you pay attention to bulletin boards as a CEO? I think I've, I do. Th I think that you know we, we have to be respectful of uh, um, you know our shareholder base, um, and uh, we are absolutely looking at the things that are on there. However, you know we our first needs are that of the business. You know to actually deliver. Yep. Um, uh, in the short term, uh, you know, really important business results. So that that is our core focus. I think you know what you can see from this operational update is it kind of paints a roadmap for what people can expect to see as a minimum uh, base position for the next six to nine months. So I hope that gives people you know a feel for what we've been up to. Uh, I think you know you, you can't take it for uh, for granted some of the uh, additions that we've made to the team as well. You know, Chris Blackwell, uh, Andy Richards, and the positions that they've come into. Um, you know, also encourage your listeners to uh, research their backgrounds and the things that they've done. You well, know. I had a quick look through, and it looks almost like a World Cup winning team with the amount the, of sort of doctorates on it. Well, I think yeah, we're, we're very lucky. I think you know, less so the, the qualifications, but more you know the the real experience. experience. If, if you look at what Andy Richards has done, for example, you know there's probably no one else in the world that understands better how to commercialise um, a product based on a known drug. You know, he's right. done it at everything from his first program through to Kyra Science. Um, uh, you know, he's got a, you know, an absolute blistering track record of the things he's done. That's why he's, he's got an MBE for services to life science. You know, if he hadn't got that, I'd have probably put him forward for it for the help that he's, you know, he, he's giving us. Um, Chris Blackwell as well. You know, people look at his background and the things he's done. Um, I mean, to take Vectura on the path that he took it from, from uh, its first IPO through to a billion dollar valuation, I think you know, says enough. You know, he's. Um, uh, the skill set that we've got at a corporate development level with Chris, the skill set that we've got at a commercial level uh, and a functional level with uh, 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 Andy Richards, you know, puts us in a really strong position now um, to, to have the expertise, you know, to, to fulfil the aspirations of, uh, of you know, what, what our company has. You know, we want to achieve similar things to, to, you know, to those guys as they have done with their, their previous ventures. Um, and certainly they're backing us to do that. Um, and that, the, the operational update talks a little bit about the process that we've gone through to do that and also fills people in on exactly where we are in some of those two lead programs and what they can expect to hear from us uh, as a base level um, uh, over the, uh, the next six to nine months. We've also talked about uh, our collaboration. 
you know, we are speaking at a commercial level to uh, you know, multiple companies, and I think that shareholders will be happy to hear um, uh, you know, the results of some of those negotiations as we uh, go over the next six to nine months as well. Okay, so the million dollar question, because I'm cheap, putting my old stock market hedge fund hat on, <laughs> give me three <laughs> summary reasons why I should consider having shares in my portfolio. Sure, I think number one, we've basically just covered it. If you look at the team, uh, you know, Joe and myself, uh, Joe Hollander, uh, Dr. Joe Hollander, CSO, uh, and myself, you know, we've, we've guided the company to this point. Um, uh, we've, uh, you know, got patents in place. Uh, we've then done deals on the back of those patents that are generating not insignificant revenue. Um, you know, you couple that team with the likes of uh, Andy and Chris, who are a very capable team, go, you know, to go off and uh, achieve the aspirations of, of the company. Uh, the second reason are the two lead programs. Um, we've got something, you know, in, in NXP1, which is going to generate near-term revenue and validation of our technology in, in, in the real near term. Uh, and then coupled that with NXP2, which is about, you know, real significant upside in terms of prolonging life within, uh, you know, fibre optic condition. Um, three, we've got a, you know, a very nice technology, uh, which has got general applicability to reprofiling of, of uh, known drugs, for which there's a, you know, significant opportunity so the opportunity for to us to to add to our pipeline um, uh, and harness the full value of our technology would be reason number three okay so the final final question can you predict if england going to win the world cup uh i'm uh gonna go with a yes i think they can and i don't think there's ever been any better opportunity than for us to do that so i'm a believer yep sign me up we're gonna win on that note daniel thank you very much for your time